بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي يسرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي بسم الله بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Speakers Corner, we welcome you every Sunday. We welcome you to provoke your mind. We welcome you to come here and listen to eloquent speech. We welcome you here to attend to your misconceptions. We welcome you here to challenge you and challenge your ideology, ideologies and your doctrines and your misconceptions. We welcome you to challenge your fallacies. We welcome you to challenge the very core of your existence. We come here every Sunday, myself and many of the other speakers. We come here and we are laughed at, we are heckled at, we are criticized. We don't get any rotten tomatoes thrown at us, but nonetheless, we get mocked. But we still come here, nothing stops us. There is always a motivation behind our speech. There is a motivation behind why we stand here with confidence, with a smile on our face, and with a will and an eagerness to pass on a message. We are not celebrities. We are not paid to do this. We verily come here because our payment, we believe, comes from a source that cannot be seen. Our payment is a source that cannot be seen. My name is Muhammad and I am a Muslim. If you ask me what I am, I will tell you, I am a mere speck of creation. Yet, I can still come here and speak to you about something that is on a wider scope than you and I about something that was prominent and existed before you and I, that existed before our forefathers, that existed before the very creation of man, before the very creation of the ground that we stand on, upon the sky that covers us in its blanket, upon the oxygen that we use to sustain our very existence. I come to talk to you about the purpose, the purpose of our existence. My brothers and sisters and friends of Speaker's Corner, we welcome you with the greeting of the angels in heaven. And that is the greeting, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty Lord Allah be upon you and may the guidance of Allah be upon those who have not yet accepted the true unedited unaltered purpose of your existence my brothers and sisters and friends I invite you to listen to me now for the next 10-15 minutes after of which I invite all of your questions I invite all of your misconceptions, I invite your mockery, everything. But allow me to speak, inshallah. My brothers and sisters, I will start by saying one line from the Quran, which as you know, is the holy book for the Muslims. And it is this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And the English translation of this is an I have not created jinn, the spirits, nor man, but for worship. Before we talk about the magnificence and the miraculous, miraculous book that the Quran is, I want to speak to you and I want to challenge your ideas about the very creation of man, about the very creation of the universe. My brothers and sisters and friends of Speaker's Corner, we walk around our whole lives. We live in one of the busiest cities in the world. I was born and raised here, so I can tell you that this is a city that never falls asleep. This is a city that makes money from dawn to dawn, from sunset to sunset. We are a people 
who are eloquent in speech. We are a people who are highly intellectual and intelligent when it comes to business. We are a people that know how to make notes out of pounds. We are a people that know how to make whole businesses out of bricks and bare rubble. So I ask you now about a very clear concept and as I take the presupposition that all of you here are intelligent human beings with rational, with rational minds, I ask you, what do you believe your purpose of life is? I ask you, I ask you, for the many of you that don't believe there is a purpose of existence, I ask you about the very trees that are behind you and behind me. Let's talk about some of the inventions that are used, that are made by the bark of a tree. For instance, you have paper, you have tissue paper. Tissue paper is used to wipe your nose. Tissue paper is used to wipe your backside. Tissue paper is used to clear up spillages. Tissue paper. <laughs> Tissue paper as very simple as it is and very cheap as it is as a part of production. It verily has a purpose. So I ask you, if you can, if you can confidently tell me that you do not have a purpose, I ask you, does that tissue paper have more purpose than you as a human being with a fully functioning brain and a fully functioning system? So I ask you, when you speak with the question of purpose, is that tissue paper greater than you, sir? I ask you, that tissue paper that you wipe your dirty nose with, does it have more purpose than the atheist who challenges the ideology that we have a purpose for our existence? Furthering this, my brothers and sisters, none of us here can say that we are self-sustaining individuals. We were born and we shall... I will invite your questions at the end, sir. Thank you. We were born and we shall die. And these are two epic parts of our existence that we never have control over. Neither does anyone else. Yet these are two prominent times in our life that we cannot fault. They will happen. Now I ask you, to all of you who wake up in the morning confidently, you go to work, you go to the gym, you make your money, you have relations with your family, you have relations with your friends, you build empires, you build nations, you build businesses. I ask you if you have control over your own existence. I ask you if you, the individual that builds these empires and builds these businesses and relationships, the strongest and most powerful men and women in existence, do they even have control over the air that they breathe for sustenance? My brothers and sisters and friends, I pose to you the example, for instance, of oxygen. Oxygen, the air that we breathe, is a component of three gases. Carbon dioxide, nitrogen and oxygen. These three gases give us the air that we breathe to sustain ourselves in creation. The absence of one of these gases means the absence of creation. Allahu Akbar. Let me say it again. These invisible gases that we breathe, the absence of one of them means the absence of the whole of creation. My brothers and sisters, I want to remind you we are not self-sustaining creatures. As we grow up, 
We believe in the ideology of Santa Claus, the tooth fairy, the boogeyman. But then as we get older, we realize they are fallacies and fantasies. But then there are some of these spoken about that never die. And yet the fastest growing ideology in the world to this day is the one I'm speaking to you about. We have heard of prophets that have come before and they have shown miracles, which is what ascertain people's faith and belief in an almighty creator. For instance, we know that Moses, peace be upon him, split the sea in half. We know that Jesus, peace be upon him, brought people back from death. And we know that Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with a book that ascertained truths that not until earlier this century, scientists were able to ascertain as truth. Even NASA, the most intelligent organization in the world, the richest and most affluent and influential organization in the world was not able to ascertain the truths that I speak to you about. Yet a man from the desert 1400 years ago came to say that the stages of embryology are there in this book, that the moon's light is a reflected light from the sun a borrowed light, if you may. It speaks about the separation between the sweet and the salty water, i.e. the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. We as Muslims come here to speak to you about a book that is free from fault. The author of this book says, I need some water, you know. The author of this book says The author of this book, the Quran, regardless of whether you believe that this book and the God or the author of the book is divine, this is what he says. Had they, meaning the disbelievers, then considered that the Quran was from other than Allah, they would surely found there in it much contradiction. This is not my challenge. This is the challenge of the author of this book, the Quran. My brothers and sisters, I shall be here all day today. Any questions you have relating back to this challenge, I invite your questions and I shall speak to you. We as Muslims worship one God. We are all enslaved by something in this world, whether it be by money, whether it be by health, whether it be by systems, we are all enslaved and serving one something. I want to be the servant of the only one worth serving, which is the author of this book. And today, I myself, as well as the other Muslims, invite your questions, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.